Hello, hey, and welcome to Brushed Vibes. We're just going to get right into it. I'm Jess. This is Dave. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, you saw me let out an epic yawn. <laughs> right as the intro music cued. I don't know um, what's going on with me. I feel like as soon as I sat behind the mic, I just got super tired and then sniffly. So um, bear with me, y'all. I'm uh, I'm pushing through, but I should we're probably gonna, be in bed. We're just going to go ahead and title this episode Sniffly Vibes. Sniffly Vibes. Allergen Vibes. Allergen um, Vibes. We're here uh, in the Queen City. It's been an eventful week since you heard from us last. You know, it uh, feels like it's been a while since we recorded it has, and it's, it's actually been, been exactly a week. So been a full full week. We're doing another Tuesday night recording. Yeah, it's uh, it's been rough. So we were supposed to record, I think, on Saturday, and then we we're like, I think I said, "Oh, you ready to record?" And you were like, "No, we'll, we'll no, do we it tomorrow." Do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow, I think I ended up being super, <laughs> super sick, super sniffly. Oh my gosh, it was just allergy galore. We uh we went to one of Solace's classmates' uh, birthdays, and I'm telling you, I thought I set the bar high for kids' birthdays. Food wise, it's impeccable. They set the bar. It was uh, high. It was equivalent to a family reunion. Yes, and we were food. we were welcomed. It was an amazing birthday. Um, I invited us. I pre-invited ourselves to Christmas and RSVP'd for next birthday. Um, but I was concerned that it would be like hot dogs, maybe pizza. And fortunately, one of the other moms I was close to, I'm close to, she had gotten there before we did. So she's like, oh, we just got here. I was like, okay, we're five minutes behind. We hadn't eaten. And I texted her. I was like, is there food? And she was like, yeah, they're lighting up the grill. And something about the way she said lighting up the grill, I was like, this is about to be, about to be legit. Heavenly. heavenly. Yeah, they had a spread. Spread. Bread. Like a, it looked like a catering spread of food, and I'm, ta- I'm talking ribs. They they grilled salmon. They had this rice. I don't know if it was dirty rice or just like family rice, but it was some good rice. Like I was analyzing it because Dave was like, figure out how to make this rice. Um, they had this punch, and you know it's a party when the the grown ups start tossing around. You want some punch. So I was like, is it drink yeah. or is it drink? And wasn't, like, wasn't high C. It was punch. Not high C. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've sat outside in the elements for more than an hour continuously. And I was outside from like three to six, maybe three to seven. Um, that's, that's a lot for me. Uh, fortunately, there weren't a lot of bugs. Like usually once I see a bee... I'm gone. I'm out of there. So it was just some, some outside flies. They were annoying, but it was a lot of fun. David got this youthful sprint about him and uh, started attacking the kids at the slip and yeah. slide. No, I splashed. <laughs> I splashed my daughter who was in the pool or in the, the kitty slide inflatable pool, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And she splashed. I was walking by. She splashed me. So I splashed her back. And then there's just a swarm of like, five six and seven year olds they're just attacking me so i was like okay that's how you want to do it they had their little water pistols little pew pews so i grabbed a bucket and i was just letting them have it i was picking kids up i was throwing them in the pool i mean i was flipping i was his childhood wrestler came out at one point he had one of the kids the little boys flipped on his shoulder power bombed them and and i had this moment where i was in mid mid power bomb i was like Oh yeah, this isn't my kid, <laughs> but it was it was a boy. So you know, I, I think there's just a natural expectation that you can be a little bit rougher with boys. So I, I put him, I put all the kids. I acted like I was gonna slam him, but I, I placed him into the pool. I didn't actually drop him um, because I didn't want his mom coming after me because she was there. But no, it was fun. Um, ran around. I was running from kids. I was chasing kids. Uh, my hamstrings were definitely tight Sunday when when we woke up, and. Uh, my back was is just now starting to, to loosen up. So I'm definitely past my prime in terms of being able to do uh, physically taxing activities without stretching, without a proper, you know, warm up, without the, you know, I, I can't do that anymore. I can't just get up and go. But no, it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was it was outside, but it was, it was hot. 
but it was, Ooh, it, was hot. it was it was enjoyable. So it was, it was a good 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 family thing to do because we had the we had our youngest out there. She was waddling around, so it was a. Uh, she was actually being tossed around. Yeah, she was being tossed around. These kids that are probably like ten pounds heavier. They're than picking her. her up, and I mean, they were just—they were her babysitter for the most part. They just one of Salas's classmates, I think, through virtual learning, has just grown a love for Savi because when they were at home, Savi was just an honorary kindergartner, so she, her face was just always in the Zoom. Yeah. So um, every chance the little girl sees her, she's like Savi. So, so she got. She she wasn't even holding Savi like a like she was hip holding her and she's about the same size as Salas and Salas doesn't even try to hip hold Savi so I was astounded but um, it was just nice seeing you know just little kids being little kids after the year that they've had and you know just been locked down and you know having to adjust to everything it was to me it was joyful just seeing. Yeah. I just I've gotten a new appreciation for child joy um, and it was just beautiful they were so happy and. It wasn't much, but you couldn't tell them that they didn't have the world in that moment. So that's what we did Saturday, Sunday. I was done. I was I was yeah. dead to the world. Uh, I think at one point I fell asleep on the couch. Savi had climbed all over me, and I just <laughs> was like, whatever, um, have your way. Um, but it was nice. We've had a pretty busy family weekend. You know, I've made it my my personal goal to be a bit more active with the girls, especially now that everyone's home from school. Uh, I, I figure, you know, we all have good health, and we we are still young. As parents, we're still young as a family. You are. <laughs> and uh, if we have a I'm little bit of energy, hill. we should definitely get out in these streets and be active. So took the girls out. We went to Camp North Beach, which is essentially this old industrial park. Camp that North End that has a Camp North End beach. that has a beach called Camp North Beach. Um, beach so I area. think I think it's like an old Chevy factory, it's an old Rite Aid factory, like all these old factories, and they are just you know gentrifying slash rehabilitating the area. So you know, I took the girls up there and they p put their feet in the sand. You know, we're like five minutes from uptown, um, but it was fun. We were just being young and reckless, and I, I again, I just love seeing baby joy um kid joy and just their giggles and all of that stuff um we also uh friday it was thursday thursday or friday, it was friday we went to uh, a food truck festival at a local brewery here in charlotte mm -hmm. and one of the vendors we went to intentionally went to buy from uh was a part of eat black charlotte week yes. restaurant week so we we plugged that last week on on the pod we're in the thick of it uh it'll be probably about midway by the time this episode launches tomorrow um, so it's the first ever restaurant week highlighting, uh, black owned establishments. So if you haven't made your way out and you're in the queen city or you're close to the queen city and you are um, feeling inclined to drive down or you're feeling inclined to go out and eat, be sure to hit up eat black Charlotte, their Instagram. I'll go ahead and flash their information here on the screen. We'll put links down below and check out the participating restaurants and or food trucks mm -hmm. and be sure to go out and show them some love. Um, this is obviously something that it's it's the first first of its kind here in the Queen City, but we want to see it grow. We want to do our part, so we're plugging it. We went out, put our dollars into into the into the economy, um, and also just had had a good time. It was weird being out among people, uh, you know, again without having like to look over your shoulder to see how close people are to you. And there were people out there with masks, and people were still respecting space, but it was kind of nice. It gave a little bit of a vibe of of life before. Mm -hmm before what once was before COVID-19 so um definitely the E Black restaurant E Black Charlotte restaurant week it ends Saturday this Saturday the 12th so you still got some time to get out and like I said hit the website hit the Instagram check out the the participating restaurants and and, and just show them some love and let us know where you go we'd love to know where you tried what you thought of it if it was good mm -hmm. um and yeah post some pictures of some food so we can know even if we don't get to go during this week we know where to go in the future so so yeah some big things happening in the queen city as always you know that summer shift has started so it's just time to be hot and tanned melanin's about to be all the way popped yeah but that's it i feel like that's what we got for our banter yeah um i have one more thing i want to add oh you know here on on rush vibes jessica is is known for uh coining phrases and creating phrases and, and sayings 
sometimes on the fly and they don't always make sense. But I have one that I would like to introduce into the world. Okay. And it's an acronym. Uh-oh. It's N-A-E. Nay. It stands for a negative African energy, which is what this woman and her children have been kicking me all week long. They're just disrespectful. <laughs> they they just jumping off. I come out of my office during work. They're jumping off furniture. They're just eating food all around the house. I come out. I look at Jessica. Jessica's on the couch like. Not my no, problem. Not my problem. Look, and I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why are you letting these children run them up? You are literally, no, 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 literally letting the inmates run the asylum. And she'll look at me and be like, well, you came out of your office more. You, it's just negative African energy. And I don't appreciate it. You know what? So for those of you out there <laughs> who either are, are just black American and have to deal with Africans on a regular basis at work, in-laws, whatever, or you happen to unfortunately to be married to one unfortunately and this is what you have to deal with just let them know rice is plated that's different and let's just let them know that you're not here for that negative african energy and and that you're not here for that nay all right just let them know i'll let you know i will call and look (laughs) from now on i'm just gonna be like nay nay the children have been coming for him do but do not do not acronym my african babies okay because they're not i'm not here for it um I'm calling out. So as of right now, you all only instances live, of negative you African energy. You only technically energy. live with two Africans. No, nah, because the way they act, uh, there's no way there's any, <laughs> <laughs> any any Black American blood, and that's full uh, bred African. African blood is. I want. Strong. I actually want. I want to. I want a DNA test because there's no way <laughs> they look just like you. No, they, they just, don't they're even just look fair, like they're just, me. They're just fair skin. They these are not my children. Look like they can't me. be. But no, okay, so no, ch- no children of mine would be as disrespectful as these children. Him. Are. They would totally be disrespectful. You tell them about I, the shower. I, the showers. <laughs> I told Solace. She was like, "Can I change?" She has this thing about you know just having to be home and dress up. Cool, uh, but I have this thing like you're not gonna put on clean clothes if you yourself are not clean. So we usually bathe them at night before bed because it just makes bedtime a lot more seamless. So I said, okay, well you can't change because you need a bath. I said everybody needs a bath. Um, I think I said even the grown ups need a bath, and she said, yeah, even Daddy needs. She said, no, Daddy doesn't need a bath. He needs a shower. And I said, yeah, you know you're right because you know the grown ups take showers, the kid takes bath. And she goes, yeah, because I bet he hasn't taken a shower in many days. The, the, the absolute, the diabolical <laughs> disrespect that these children reference their father with. And it then, is just, it's just. And then Sami just doesn't give like anything I'll be, I'll about be in a anybody. meeting. I'll, I'll be on a meeting and she'll just bust the door open and then just stroll in like she pays the mortgage. <laughs> and her, she'll, she got and this she'll, drunken walk. <laughs> trying to see who's on the screen like you don't know who's on the screen you but don't know, know anybody her. you don't know because anybody of the on the way screen. savvy is everybody knows her but she there was one day david was in a meeting and we had his office door closed and, I, banging and on my she's door. so used to just being able to stroll in like she'll hear his voice and she'll be like oh yeah he's over there so she'll just stroll on over there and the door was closed and she was just like bang 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 so i thought okay like 10 seconds of banging she'll walk away no, no. this child was invested she was like i'm gonna get in this room and i had to physically come and carry her away because she was so, so yeah these kids don't have any respect for him but that's not because of me like that's yes, from is. his blood it's the, ne- it's the negative african that's, energy that's in them. The- <laughs> it's, it's in their blood they can't so what do I get to do? Negative black energy? No, there's no such thing. <laughs> there's no such thing as negative black energy. Excuse me. <laughs> Let's not do this today. It does not exist. Whew. I'm it sorry. It is there. What do you? What it do you, is there. This is. Uh, I believe it is a red Moscato. You poured it for me, so you should be. I laced. I laced it too. So beware. It's truth. It's truth, sh- it's truth serum. Straight to sleep. <laughs> it's truth serum. Okay, Wonder Woman. Um, I just got some uh, some ginger tea, so I'm. Not oh, the g- ginger Yeah, the ginger tea that, that almost killed you a couple episodes ago. It did not you were almost, coughing no, while I, I was trying ginger to. ginger beer. Yeah, all right, whatever. So, but uh, the ginger tea, you clowned me on a couple episodes, and you were no, like, so you going to be boo-booing? I mean, I probably will tonight, too, because it's, di- I mean, it's supposed to clean you out. That's what I know, it's just it's supposed for. to it's just. digest. It helps you. But it's not going to, like, clean you. It's not scrubbing up in there. Well, that's what I need. Speaking of scrubbing, have you seen my progress? No, because I can still see it. But it's it's lighter. 
How about you just don't put stuff on the wall and then that way we don't have to worry about scrubbing. I mean, even if I don't put stuff on the wall, I need to remove what's the residue on the wall. So there's a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser behind David's shoulder. So uh, we've, we've, obviously, since we're here, we we do have a show uh, this evening. Do we? Um, One of these days we're not going to have a show. We're going to do the banter and be like, so we don't have a show. We don't have a show. You're just going to look at us. Um, I feel like at one of these upcoming episodes, we should give the David and Jessica story. Maybe we should like shoot it like a documentary. Where we do like solo interviews and we each uh, recount no, cause our, you'd our be early relationships. No, because you'd be interrupting me as I spoke the truth. I, w- I would, because With the negative en- black the energy, en- the <laughs> negative negative African energy would be taking over Mbe. the room. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna we're gonna get into that after our, our first break. Um, but yes, please do. Uh, like I said, check out E Black Charlotte Week. Um, hit the Instagram. Check them out. Uh, Mayor Vi Lyles was checking out uh, i think they were at what the fries i think what the fries what the it's fries on my list they used to be a food truck now they got the a mayor, brick and mortar the mayor is out in these streets supporting but the I mean, initiatives she always, she's yeah, always by, been in these well streets. you know by loves, loves the camera so um she do we're but gonna take a break on camera so <laughs> she, she deserves we're gonna to uh we're gonna take a break we're gonna come back and then we're gonna get into everything all right cool i ain't black energy back like we never left because we didn't we're here it's june Pride Month. Pride Month. Woo, woo. Which um, also is the same month of Juneteenth. Juneteenth. What is it, 156 years, if I'm not mistaken? I, to, to be safe, just say over 100. <laughs> well, what years on your shirt? I can do the math right quick. 1865. 1865. Yes. So 1965 was 100 years. My parents were born in 63, and they're... Okay, so it's in that range. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, so before we jump into everything, so it's Pride Month. I don't know that we've ever talked about what I do on the show, but I, I do social media for three clients. Um, three clients. I had one, and then I picked up two. Um, but then I'm dropping one because I just don't... Because she's... Just her time is in such demand that she has to drop clients. It's, so it's if not. you need if you need someone to manage your social media, it's not that serious. Um, I just didn't. I, I just, she could she could help. She could <laughs> serve a purpose. I she could fill a need. Drop the client because I didn't align with their brand voice. Oh, I feel like you're going somewhere with this. Well, sort of. Their brand voice didn't speak to me. It, mm. Like I couldn't connect with it. And you know, you go through. For anyone who works in social media or, you know, who has to represent a brand, you go through these brand decks, they teach you the history of the, the, the company and all this stuff. And it it was the first time that I kind of, you realize that these these companies aren't, aren't coming for you. Um, there's a certain people, people, a certain people uh, that they're going for and you're not it. So as someone who has to put on these shoes to speak this brand's role, I couldn't do it because I can't, because they're not, they weren't intending to reach me i just so happen to sure. now be a potential defaulted audience but because there was one <laughs> one of my clients is a grocery chain and i guess some girl was able to find some ethnic hair products at the store and um uh, she posted like oh look like she posted like her her like four or five pictures of her twist out now i'm a black woman so i'm i'm you're african I'm an African with woman negative, who's black, with negative energy. who has negative black energy. So I'm seeing this, and I I was impressed with her twist out. So I was, I I, I should have gotten in trouble for this because I was, I think I said yes, sis, that twist out is fire. So she responds back, and she's like lit because here it is, this white, predominantly white grocery store has responded to her Instagram post saying yes, sis. You should have said, you should have said queen. Yes, <laughs> queen. I wanted to say queen, but yes. I was like, oh no, that's pushing it. Like they, if that's pushing yeah. it too. They'd have got you up out of there they, for that. They would have. Um, but I had to, like, to tap on the shoulder. A lot of times I have to like restrain my, my blackness, even on social media. And I think that was the first time that I was just like, screw it. I really want this girl to know that her twist out is amazing. And I'm glad she found the products at this store. So I was like, yes, yeah, sis. That twist out is fire. Fire emoji. I put the fire emoji. Um, Should have done the Elmo. So I, th- I, I think. Um, so 
I think somebody had commented, like one of the, one of the brand team members was just like, "Oh, this was a great response, but let's try to stay in the brand voice." And the brand voice, I think, like the rapper that they picked is like Kelly Ripa. So like Kelly Ripa's not saying, "Yes, yeah, sis, um, your twist out is fire." Right. But I mean, it was just kind of disappointing because you're trying to like pull in a different demographic. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make it's pride. Another one of my clients there, um, they did one post for Pride, um, and it's become very polarizing. It's it's literally just a, a rainbow cake that they're selling by the slice in their bakery, and people are losing it. People, Some people are so excited. Some people are dropping scriptures. Like, some people are mentioning Noah um, and the rainbow and, you know, how God's promised from the rainbow. Um some people are saying they're not going to shop at the store all June. Other people are saying, like, you guys are going to hell. And it's like, what if, like, I see some of these comments, and it takes everything in me to not respond with some sass um, and to just choose to ignore. But, <laughs> can't take my glasses <laughs> off. Uh, but it's just, it just shows how, one, people don't know how to not, Okay. People don't know how to not say something. Like, if pride is not your thing. These are Jessica's glasses. They're my glasses. So I'm, and, I'm getting ready to go blind. And he looks like Columbo. Um, he's going to investigate something. If something is not your forte, like you, and I'm not, my glasses prescription is not that high. Um, it feels like it. You, you could just choose to ignore it. Um, I think somebody had posted, they've started like labeling. A lot of companies have been doing it. Trader Joe's does it like a black, like certain products, they'll say like black female owned on the tag. But um, this particular client of mine, they've started labeling. So it's like black owned, woman owned, LGBTQ plus owned. And people are, that has also become polarizing. And people are straight up like, oh, well, I'm not going to shop here anymore. Oh, thank you for letting me know what not to buy. And I'm like, why are people so mean? Like, I just don't, I just don't understand. Um, but, and, and the internet, when you, 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 internet, we already know that the internet has given people a platform and permission to say essentially just everything. Like just like us. No, this is a podcast. Uh, Which is hosted on the internet. Uh, to say whatever they want. But it's, it's so annoying. Cause it's like, you know, nothing would happen if you just kept scrolling or if you didn't say anything or if you, not that I'm encouraging your heartless, you know, bigot full opinions um bigoted i liked bigot full um but you could keep them to yourself i don't know that that's a word it, it is now okay bigot full because you could have this, like is, a, this is a prime example of a negative african energy no, i'm trying to this is I'm trying innovative to, no, african I'm to, I'm, energy i'm trying to tell her that that's not a word and trying to give her the proper word to use and then you see the spite like the spite that i'm met, met with Spite? It's just negative African energy. That's the all it, is. The, it was negative black energy when you interjected no. and tried to mansplain that I'm not was, speaking English correct, correctly. It was corrective of black energy is what it was. Let's be clear. So the point I'm just trying to make is it's not always necessary for like you to say what you want to say or what you think you need to say. Um, and it's not going to get you into heaven or wherever you think you're going. Um, by making one post on social media about yeah. a rainbow cake and, slice. And that's from people of of all beliefs, of all, yes. you know, public, uh, uh, po political affiliation, creeds, ethnicities, races, whatever. Like, you just see it and, and people just feel like they, they have to say something. And I have actually learned early on um, in, in the age of, of social media when I see something that, because like I'll scroll, like my, I got my, my screen time uh, uh, report this week, and it was up 15%. I spent eight on hours. On top of the 17% he went up last week. <laughs> eight hours on the phone. Um, That's like 30 something but, percent. But the bulk of it was on Wednesdays, and Wednesdays is when our episodes launch, so I'm, I'm pushing out a lot of the the content and, and sharing and whatnot. So that's that's where the bulk of it came from. Increased black screen time. But <laughs> I was on the phone a lot. But so I'm, I'm, I'm checking, you know, I'm trying to check the pulse of certain things so that if, you know, we need topics to discuss, I'm, I'm in the know. And I always see stuff and I'll, I'll come across something. I'm like, like, why did you, why, why would you say that? And I'll just keep scrolling because it's possible to see something that you don't agree with, acknowledge that you don't agree with it, process it and keep it moving because ultimately it doesn't really affect you, mm -hmm. especially cakes 
um, and, and their decorative <laughs> and appearance. it's a good-looking cake. It's, it's literally the one comment that somebody said that was accurate. It's missing a color. Like, I think the rainbow has seven colors, and there might be only six or five layers in this cake. Other than that, like, it's great. Um, but to your point, you can keep scrolling. Sometimes... Keep it moving. Sometimes I do respond to the... Especially, like, with all this racial tension we've been dealing with i've gotten into a few what tension a few bits um with some older demographic people and then halfway through i'm like you know what what i say on facebook is not is not you're like is not going to it doesn't matter change your mind it's not going to you're not going to get an aha moment from this one random black woman so like i've literally been in arguments with people been like you know what it's and i've told them i'm like you're, you you're, got it. Your your mind's not going to change, so I'm not going to waste my energy you on it. you. Um, and then I kept scroll. I'll screenshot it and then I'll send it to David. Like, oh, look at this person I almost got into a fight with. Uh, it is it is my it is my fear. <laughs> I have I have a legitimate fear of this. I, I I wake up in the middle of the night with in a cold sweat, thinking that just one of these days I'm going to wake up from either a nap or a good sleep, a great sleep, and my wife. Is going to have gone viral for all of the wrong reasons because she engaged in a back and forth with someone on on social media and it just blew up and I'm going to be like, <laughs> it's going to be on this Twitter. Is, this is this is my life now. It's, it's is, probably going to be on Twitter. I'm married. You guys know. I'm married you know to, to 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 the woman who went viral on social media for some stupid. No, it wouldn't be stupid. Some stupid back and forth. It, it would be an amazing in. back and forth, and I would probably make the other party look so so um belligerent with their negative energy regardless of what color they so you, are you actually mentioned something that's, that's very interesting to me in that you uh uh mental health has been uh, in the headlines here recently um with you know professional athletes uh with uh, educators you know finally finishing this school year the year of of schooling <laughs> with with having to deal with COVID both virtually and, and in person with moms. Uh, with moms and then, you know, families, you know, being trapped with each other <laughs> during, during the last year. Excuse me. And um, I just wanted to, to really call out uh, how seriously uh, mental health should be taken both in the workplace, uh, at home, personally, relationships, um, I think we all just need to be aware that this last year is like really, really taxing on, on a lot of people and everybody handles it differently. Um, and to just kind of be aware of that and um, make sure we're, we're, we're there for those who need it um, in the most effective way, not necessarily, you know, the way that, that we want to be there. Um, like for instance, you know, if just sitting with, I, I saw a video on, on uh, social media and it was like the best way that you can support a friend. And it was, uh, it was a guy, it was one of those bits where the person is one person is playing multiple characters. And, uh, there was a friend who was sitting down you could kind of see that they were, they were depressed or going through something. And the friend was like, like, are you okay? And one thing I was like, no, like, do you want to talk about it? And he was like, no. And he was like, do you mind if I just sit with you? And he was like, yeah. And then the video ended. And it is like, you never realize it. It seems like such a, such a subtle thing. And it may seem like, ineffective because you're not talking you're not getting to the the root of the problem but you're just there and sometimes that's that's more than enough so um i wanted to use this time this episode just to kind of go back over the last year um and then just you know maybe each of us just talk about uh how our mental health was affected and things that we used um to to help get ourselves you know through it um effective strategies that we found out that actually worked um and you know how we're kind of trying to keep that at the forefront of of what we do now because we're still kind of in the still pandemic ish uh but we're having to readjust now to to a to well you know reopening economy and reopening world so um i'll start <clears throat> so for me uh you know i uh i thought that being inside the house being you know kind of confined to the house would be a great thing for me because I'm, I'm introverted and i don't really like going out anyway because uh, because y'all just acting wild, especially here in Charlotte. <laughs> but uh, I found out that, um, you know, whereas home kind of used to be uh, my my release, my time where I the place where I went to kind of get away from everything, I couldn't because my work was at home. Um, my family was at home all the time. Uh, we had two young kids. One was a newborn, 
um, and, a, and, a, and a four-year-old who were just go, go, go all the time. Everybody needed things all the time. And there was really no space to kind of, to kind of find that alone time. So it felt like, like the walls were caving in, but at the same time, being a father and a husband, I felt, um, I felt guilty. I was kind of convicted. I was like, well, why would you want to get away? Like you're, you're a father, you're a husband, you're supposed to be there for your family. You're supposed to be active. You're always supposed to be on. Um, so I was kind of like having this internal battle where like, I was like, I need, I just need time to myself so I can be all these things. And the other side of me was like, well, you should already just automatically be all these things. So I, I, I struggled a lot with finding the balance between, okay, I got to be here. I got to be present. Um, my wife just had a baby. So, you know, she's recovering, um, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, we have a newborn baby who's just crying all the time, doesn't sleep. And then we, we also have a four-year-old who we can't forget about. You know, these are, these are critical, critical days and years and months, um, in her development, um, and in her life. So, uh, one thing I found, uh, was just going outside and, and sitting, like just being outside. Um, most times when I go out, I, I'll smoke a cigar or I'll have a cigar and a drink or just a drink. But sometimes I just went out outside like in the morning or in the middle of the day and just like sat and just listening to trees, wind blowing, birds chirping, like animals running around, like maybe hearing people talking in the background. It was just, it was just so soothing. And it was just only like maybe 15, 20 minutes at a time. If it was late in the evening when everybody went to bed, you know, it, it may be 45 minutes to an hour, but it really just kind of helped me settle, get that time to myself, you know, maybe work through some thoughts I was having or, or the day, but still be home and still be available. Like if Jess needed me, I'm just on the other side of the screen door. She'd call me in or whatever other girls could come outside. And sometimes, um, our oldest solace, she'd come out and join me. So, uh, it, being outside and not necessarily with like headphones or music or tablets or any, anything, just like being outside, I think is just kind of underrated in terms of just how therapeutic and, and coping it can be. Um, and I think it was a fantastic coping mechanism for me. Um, and it sucked because we don't have like a, we don't have a covered patio or anything. So when it was raining, <laughs> I couldn't go outside and I'd just be sitting in the window, like looking through the blinds, like is, <laughs> is the rain going to stop now? But yeah, that was one thing, um, that I really, really struggled with early on. Um, but you know, luckily it was summer, I think when, when, or, you know, going into springtime, summer when the pandemic really hit. So, uh, we had pretty decent weather most of the time. So I was able to kind of usually get, get that time. Um, and it, it, it helped a lot. So that was one thing for me. Um, we got about eight minutes, so I'm gonna let you start. And then we'll, if you don't finish, we'll come back after the break. Uh, okay. So for me, the, this season has been very, very difficult, um, to say the least. So December before the pandemic started, I had a job at a pretty toxic, um, company and, Fortunately, we were in a place that David said, you know, hey, we can afford for me to just work. Like, He's always been a proponent for I would rather us force and figure out how we were going to pay the mortgage than to have you in a unhealthy rela like relationship with work because it's just going to trickle down to the family. So, you know, at the time I was eight months, nine months pregnant, um, and he just didn't see the worth, the value in me working in an unhealthy environment um, and being pregnant. And we understood that I was going to be leaving to to have the baby anyway. So I ended up leaving. And, you know, my plan was, you know, this is pre-COVID uh, when you can plan your life and it goes according to plan. So, you know, my plan was, you know, I popped this baby out. Um, she was supposed to be born in February. So have the baby in February, take a few few weeks and, you know, I'll get right back into the workforce. And, you know, she showed up three weeks early. So even that was a relief because I was like, all right, I've got three extra weeks um, that I can use to get into the workforce. So uh, my plan was, you know, I'm 29. I'm about to be 30. I think I turned 36 weeks after Savi was born. And I, I've always had this innate fear of losing myself to my children because of the type of mom I have to be, because of the type of mom I want to be. And putting so much into my children and making sure that they're prepared for the purpose that they have to fulfill in this world that I lose myself. And then when they're off 
living their amazing life. I'm going to be, you know, 40 something trying to figure out, okay, well, who am I and what do I want to do? So it was so important that after Savi was born, I got back to work. I got into something that was not being a mom, not being a wife, not being a homemaker, but was for me. So we get hit with this pandemic and I struggled because one, even though the difference in, in years was only four between Savi and Solace, it was brand new to me. I felt, I remember one time I was asking my aunt something like, oh, how do I do this for the baby? And my cousin was like, yo, you just did this. Like, why are you asking how to do this? Like her baby, her youngest baby is 24. Why are you asking her how to do something when you literally just did this? And it was that moment that I just started to realize how disconnected I was and how like confused and lost I was. And I, like, I would say even up until now, I'm still seeking something for me. Um, and yeah, I'm working freelance stuff, but it's not what I want to be doing. And it's, part time and yeah it's given me the flexibility to you know be available for my my kids but for a big part of the pandemic I kind of just felt like dead weight I felt like I wasn't really contributing to the household and you know part of me was thankful for the pandemic up until a certain period because it's like that was my excuse it's like oh well it's a global pandemic so this is why I can't find a job this is why I can't get a job but then I was seeing people get jobs in the pandemic so I was like okay this excuse is only going to be good enough but for so long and then you know it was just also feeling like there was nowhere to go there was nowhere to escape um there were days where i was i was very close to just hopping in the car and going somewhere where i don't know but then i remembered that i don't have a job i'm broke so i can't get far um and it's also a global pandemic so i can't just knock on someone's that, door that gas tank will humble you it, it will real quick um real and quick. if you're not going anywhere you're not really keeping your gas tank full so you know i definitely struggled with a lot of identity issues and then you know being stuck in the house and just cabin fever and i'm not really one who i'm social enough that i enjoy being out and about but i don't need to be out um i can be in the house like Yo, I could be in the house. That that maybe that's that negative African energy. Like John and Tina raised a kid. She's already buying it. Who could be in? I could stay. I can be locked in. I was fine. Like I was talking to my mom and I was telling her how people were struggling, and she was like, "Oh, I was good." I went to the grocery store. I came home. Like that was enough. Like for me, going to the grocery store and coming home was perfect. Like that was all I needed. Um, But it was definitely a hard time, and I. I think it was double compounded because you've got all the elements against you from being in a global pandemic. But on top of that, I just had a baby. So I've got all these hormones. I've got all of these just personal issues. I thought I was, I had visioned a snapback. Like I was going to snap back to like 2014 and I, I snapped forward actually. Um, I snapped into the future. So I was very unhappy that, you know, I couldn't get myself, it was almost as if I felt like I had no control over any part of my life. And then on top of that, I have this baby who is not like the last baby we had, who, even though, yes, you know, a baby is a challenge regardless. I think because we had solace, I was like, okay, we could do this. This is, this is a breeze. It was not a breeze. Um, you know, Savi has a, a, she lives up to her name. Um, and she's got, she's been strong the way she barreled into this world. That's just who she is. So, you know, there were many tears. There were many days where it's like, she has woken up every 45 minutes and I don't know what to do and I can't catch a break. And then we're in a pandemic. So it's not like I have someone who can come and relieve me because this it's, it's too dangerous. Um, so it's just the four of us. And on top of having to be there for this new baby, we were very intentional about making sure that solace felt as minimal shift to her normal life as possible. Um, because you know, she went from being an only child and the only local grandchild to, you know, her cousin moved down and then she got a sibling. So all of the individual attention that she was getting disappeared really quickly. So it was really important for us to still have the energy for her. And, you know, she's always wanting to do something like, can we do Play-Doh? Can we paint? Can we color? And it's like, can we just lay on the couch and, and close our eyes? Um, so it was, it was, there were a lot of elements and it was very exhausting and just feeling like 
I don't know what tomorrow. I know what tomorrow is going to consist of, but I don't know how I can make it different for me. And I know we're we're gonna have to take this quick break, so I'm gonna stop before I jump into a another tangent. Well, I didn't have to cut her off. That's you know what that is. That's progress here. Well, your body on language. You're shifting negative no, I, body well, language. <laughs> I will be right back. So Jessica was looking at. Amazon while we're trying to record. I was, you know, trying to be up, trying to be all about business, and she over here shopping. I, that is about um. So okay, Silas, literally, literally. Uh, so it was just it was it was hard for me. It was, uh, and that's still hard for me. And I still kind of feel in this place of being stuck. Like okay, not moving forward. I'm not moving backward. Everybody around me is making progress. You know, Solace is going to first grade. Savi is taking over the world. And you're also moving forward. So I'm sure a lot of moms feel like this because you want to be a good mom. You want your kids to look back and and know that, you know, you put everything you could into them. But at the same time, you want to make sure you are supporting yourself. And that's super important. So for me... I've been big about therapy for the past on and off. I'd say for the past four or five years, um, I had to fire one therapist because she, like, I remember like I poured my heart out to her and she was like, okay, so it sounds like everything is good. Um, and I was like, ma'am, if everything's good, I wouldn't be sitting on your chair talking to you. But, um, I think there's a big misconception for people who are self-aware uh, and I happen to be very self-aware and I get told by every therapist I have um, that I, I, I know where I am and and why, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with certain things. So I think people assume that that self-awareness can be a strength, but it's almost a cry for help. It's like, yeah, I know everything. So now I, I need more guidance. So I, I've definitely, my therapist has gotten me through and i would say not every conversation has been like oh my gosh i'm so enlightened and you really helped me figure things out like sometimes we laugh and i'm just like so uh like what did i get out of this and it could simply have been just speaking to somebody who's not david who's not you know a 16 month old one year like child who's just pouring food on the floor or a five-year-old um it's just an objective person who's seeing things from an external perspective but i think that that has really helped me one postpartum wise and two just getting through this this season uh and you know sometimes i'll do a session with her and i i think i want like certain answers i want like everything to make sense and i have to remind myself that like you know, she's not like a psychic she doesn't have any special powers yeah. to to fix life the way i want it to be but you know she's an ear to listen and tell me when you know eh, you're kind of off track or you know what you you understand what's going on and you just have to like this is life and you have that's just what you have to deal with so the pandemic has just been tough on everybody. Um, I do think some people coped with it a lot better than others. There are some people that, you know, they took a very isolated approach to the pandemic. And I, it, to me, it's obvious that they almost, I don't want to say didn't know how to handle it, but it was just overwhelming to them. Um, which I respect because you can't dictate how people should handle stuff. Um, and then there are some people who were just like, yo, I'm going to live. And I think about three fourths of the way through, um, I kind of decided like, I'm, I'm not going to let this pandemic take a whole year of my life for me. I already have enough things that are going against me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to add COVID to that list on top of it. So, yeah. uh, I think mental health is super important. Mental health in the black community is really important. I know, it took me a while to be pro therapy. Um, I think I had gone to count. I went to the the counselor on campus uh, when I was in college, maybe sophomore, junior year. And I was so hesitant because I think my dad had said, if, <laughs> if you like want to join, like if you want to join the secret service or be um, a CIA agent, you can't have like therapy sessions on your your record. 
because they won't hire you. And I don't know why I, I, I held on to that because I was like, oh, well, maybe in the off chance that I decide to be a CIA agent or a spy, um, I can't let them think I have mental health issues. So I put it off forever. And then finally I had to like tell myself, like, Jess, you're not going to be a spy. Like, alias is not your ministry. So just keep it moving like go go get counseling so um i just gone through some things and and i needed to speak to someone and i finally you know decided like hey whatever this prevents me from getting i don't know if it's true like i don't know if my dad's source is accurate that if you go to therapy you can't be a spy i'm gonna go out on a limb and say probably it's not probably not true um i'm sure they want their 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 spies and their agents to be you know at top notch mental health they're dealing with a lot as well um so since then you know i've always been big on it i've been secretive about it until maybe the past couple years where i found more comfort in being like my therapist my therapist um and not feeling one hoity-toity like oh i'm so bougie i have a therapist um and two not feeling crazy i think the black community we, we've gotten so used to internalizing our issues and carrying our burdens and not expressing what is happening within us that when someone does go to a therapist you know oh it's the crazy doctor oh you know it's the loony the loony house blah blah, blah. and a lot of us need to be speaking to someone um not because you're crazy like this this concept this concept that you know if you're seeking mental health it's linked to craziness is 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 crazy it's insanity um and it's preventing a lot of people from progressing um in a forward positive way i i know you know i i don't know when like if kids need depending on, I'm sure, their circumstances. Some kids might need therapy. But, you know, I feel like we try to, to speak to Solace um, and eventually Savi in a way, a manner where, you know, she's heard, she feels heard, she feels understood. Sometimes she's wild and it's like, okay, little girl, you need to, like, cool down and then we'll, yeah. we'll have a conversation. But I'm really big on, like, okay, how do you feel? How, like, why do you feel this way? Um, and then also, like, talking her through like even this morning we we got into it um <laughs> she had i had gone upstairs to get savvy i walked by her bedroom door which was closed which isn't supposed to be closed but that's whatever um she popped out and she said was somebody at my door and i said no i just walked by and she closed the door so i went and i got savvy i came out um i opened the door and she was laying in her bed watching her tablet and i said good morning and then I closed the door because the door was closed when I got to it. And I came downstairs. And this little chica is going to come over to the top of the staircase and just start crying. I didn't want the door to be closed. So, you know, we went through this whole, I was, I was on the edge. But, you know, I went through this whole, I'm, even though, <laughs> even though I'm upset, I'm going to walk her through my frustration and why I don't think her, why her frustration doesn't match the situation. And, you know, a lot, and Savi was on my hip and I was, co she was co-signing with me. She, she felt my vibe where I was coming from, but it's, as a parent, it's definitely a lot of work, especially when you grew up with, you know, the type of culture where it's very much so like, look, I said this and accept it. Um, but that's not how adult world is. And at the end of the day, we're raising adults, not raising, like we're raising children to become adults. So we need to do what we can now. So, you know, we speak to her in a manner of acknowledging how she feels and making sure she understands, you know, the validity of her feelings and how important it is to express her feelings. Like, if you're just crying, no one, like, no one knows how to help you. No one knows how to fix your situation. Um, you can be upset, but you need to be able to calm yourself down to the point where you can communicate to someone what is going on so that we can effectively find a solution for it. Um, that's a tough one, but, you know, and it takes a lot of patience, but I feel like that's what starts the foundation for mental health and mental development. And, you know, she's become a big sister now and you know that can be overwhelming i've even thought like hey maybe we should just get her in to talk to somebody just just you know as a check-in like yeah as of right now nothing's wrong with her her life is great but sometimes like she's had one meltdown i think because she felt that i was giving savvy more attention which i think is probably 
customary with most kids, but you know, maybe there's more to it. Cause I know I have issues regarding, you know, when I became an older sister and feeling like my parents gave my brother everything and let him get away with things that I wasn't allowed to. And he spent a lot of days trashing my room, which I was then expected to clean up. So I have some trauma from that too, but, um, I've gone on, on a long tangent, so I'm going to pass it back to you. I was, I was, I was going to ask if I might be able to, to speak again before we, we close the episode out. This is Jess, Jessica vibes featuring David. Um, but all, all, all that you said and all of that, uh, very true. Uh, and, uh, a couple of things I, I would like to, uh, double down on is definitely, uh, therapy is, is very important and it's, it's health. It, I, I, I see therapy as, as important as going to get your physical, you know, yearly. Um, you, you don't have to see somebody every week. Um, you know, you and your therapist can, can determine what kind of schedule you need, but I, I do think that, you know, everybody, every human, um, and even kids, honestly, you know, everybody should, uh, at a certain point, you know, just have a therapist that they can, they can go to and speak to and, like I said, even if it's once in a blue moon, just kind of having that that professional, licensed professional who you can can speak to and confide in and feel comfortable and vulnerable with and allow them to to give you feedback, I, I think it's, it's very important. Um, so, yes. And I, I too, have been, uh, was in therapy at, at one point last year. I haven't um, been, excuse me, I haven't been in a while. Um, my therapist actually told me that I was, self-sufficient <laughs> so uh i was like cool That's get to save, I, get, I get to save these hundred dollars a week back in my pocket baby but uh it, it is something that I, i've been thinking um i need to just jump back into just to kind of you know just get a get a checkup so to speak <clears throat> so uh another thing that um that i battled and and have been battling i think uh is my um identity at work so not so much the the physical place that I go to to work, which is my office, my home office, but um, you know, being forced to what before the pandemic hit, um, I changed jobs during the pandemic. But before that, I was traveling for about two years, seventy five percent of the time each month. So three, you know, three weeks out of the month, I was I was on the road, and then coming off of a pandemic, or coming off of paternity leave, um, I, I came back to work in a pandemic and was forced to work from home. And traveling, I was, I was out and about, I was, I was in cities, whatever city I was traveling to, I was traveling around the city and, and working. So it was, it was a tough adjustment and it was a, it was adjustment that I didn't realize was tough um, on the surface level. I was like, oh, cool. I'm at home. I, you know, I get to wear my PJs all day. I don't have to get a, get dressed, put on any khakis or anything. But, you know, deep down it was, it was really affecting me because it was just, it was like, it was like shock. It was like going from, you know, cold water to, to hot water. So add that on top of changing jobs. Um, and I left a company that I had been working at for almost six years to a brand new company in a brand new industry, brand new coworkers. And it was just, it was just tough. And I went from a place where people knew me and I knew people to where nobody knew me. And I had to like build up my reputation all over again. Um, and then, you know, last summer happened with, with the George Floyd murder and the Ahmaud Arbery murder and the Breonna Taylor murder among others. And there was just, whole lot going on and, I, and there were some things that happened at work that that made me question and second guess if i had made the right decision in terms of of where to work so i kind of had to work through all that um you know try to decide if this was a company i could see myself at long term um was i in the right line of work long term did i want to do something differently so it was just so many different things happening at once that kind of just really took a toll on me mentally where you know i just kind of didn't really recognize myself most days I was telling Jesse and I noticed like when I walk around the house now I, I slide my feet like I drag my feet my posture is slouching and you know just being um be it unhappy with where you are professionally or unhappy with where you work professionally you know it can just have such take such a toll on you and then when you can't get out really to kind of release that energy or you haven't thought of ways to get out to release that you know that negative energy healthily it can all just kind of compound and then you're just you find yourself in, in a state of depression, which I actually slipped into. So on top of that, <laughs> um, at the beginning of this year, I was actually furloughed from my job for, for two months. And this is actually like breaking news. 
<laughs> for anyone who's close to us who listens. Uh, my parents knew. Um, I, I, I think I told maybe one or two friends. I, I, me- I meant to tell some people who I guess I didn't tell, but I don't really know what state of mind I was in. Um, but yeah, I was actually out of work for like two months with um, a brand new baby. Not a brand. Well, no, nah, she is. She, she was a year. She had some miles. She, on yeah, her. she she was a year, but with with a young with a young family essentially, and um, it initially it it rocked me a little bit because like oh my god like I've never been in the situation before. I just I told Jess she didn't have to work, and now I'm not working. <laughs> so it's like, what are we gonna do? But honestly, it was probably the biggest blessing in disguise because one, it allowed me time to just settle, to just be still. Um, not have to worry about work, not have to worry about emails and worry about meetings, none of that. Not to worry about whether my status is active on the on the computer or messenger. But I got to just be still and really contemplate and think about what it is I wanted to do. And, you know, I um you know, there's a lot of thoughts that, that went through my head, but ultimately what came out of it is I got really, really close with my with my family and it sounds weird, but that helped me really come out of the funk that I was I was in. You know, I got to take over nap duties for our youngest. I got to put her, just start putting her down for her midday nap every single day. And I still do it now. Um, I think we were on and off in terms of who would take our oldest to bed, but I've, I'm pretty much the de facto parent when it comes to putting solace to bed. Um, Jess and I were able to hang out during the day. Um, we would send the kids to grandparents and we would go on day dates. We would go to liquidation stores and look for cheap furniture like we would just hang out and it was stuff that we it was something we hadn't gotten to do since you know I don't even know the last time that we could just kind of on a whim just go somewhere during the day so it honestly you know I, I had people who were my co-workers they were like oh man I'm so sorry like we hope we can get you back soon in my mind I'm like yo take your time <laughs> take, take your time I'm good I take promise you don't weep for me don't feel bad like I am it was literally probably like the best two months of my life and within the last couple of years, aside from like, you know, after Sovereign was born or after, um, you know, ex- with the exception of getting to see Jessica um, walk across the stage and then get her college diploma, like behind those two things, like it was just like the best period ever. Um, and I was so worried that it would like destroy me and it didn't. And another thing it helped me realize is that you can't allow like Jessica said, she didn't want, she doesn't want her identity to be the fact that she's a mom or a wife. Um, you can't allow your place of employment to be your whole identity or, or a majority of your identity because that could be gone in an instant. Like I was told 15, I was, I was given 15 hours notice <laughs> that I was being furloughed and it can happen so quickly. Um, you know, if you, if your salary fits a number that needs to, to be saved in a, in a pandemic or in a, in a new, in a, in a, in a place where a company realizes they need to shift gears or downsize or whatever, you know, no matter how successful you are, no matter how much people like you, no matter, you know, how, how long your title is, you know, you can, you can be, you know, you can be subbed out. <laughs> so, uh, that, that helped me a lot and, and it helped me frame what I want our life to look like, um, within the next 10 to 15 years. Um, and where I don't want to put what things that I don't want to rely on solely for my livelihood, which is, you know, an employer, um, now I still work and I still enjoy my coworkers. I still work as, as hard as I can because I need to provide need to put food on the table. Um, and I'll continue to work until I don't have to, but I'm not in a place where like, I'm only relying on my employer for, for, you know, sustainability. Or I think that, you know, my, my coworkers and my job is a family environment. Like it's, it's a business, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, a business is, is a business and you may get along well with the people you work with. You may get well along, get along well with the people who you report to. But at the end of the day, if a business decision needs to be made, a business decision is going to be made. So, um, it being furloughed helped me realize those things. And it wasn't out of spite and wasn't angry at anybody. I was really appreciative as ironic as that sounds. Uh, but it, it really, really helped me, you know, change my, my line of thinking and it's it's honestly for the better, and it's only going to be for the betterment of our family and you know how we how we proceed forward. So, um, you know, just always keeping keeping in, in perspective, um, you know what what a job is, um, and it's it's a means to to an end. It's a means to keep light on. It's a means to 
generate a certain source of income. It's a means to get you to wherever your goals are in life. Uh, but, you know, it shouldn't allow it to be your end all be all because, you know, it could end pretty quickly uh, before before you know it. So um, that was my that was one thing that kind of affected my mental health. But uh, being able to sit at home for two months and and really be with my family and be present, um, it, it helped me come out of that. And I think it kind of it kind of saved me because I was <laughs> I was going to a really dark place uh, in terms of the, the depression and, and it really helped bring me out of it. So um, definitely a blessing in disguise. Yeah, um, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed parts of the furlough. Um, I had to, I had to delete the Amazon app from my, <laughs> yeah. from, from my phone and we had to, we had to be real particular. Um, but it was, it was nice. And, you know, I think I had to regularly remind him of, you know, you're probably not going to get another, it sounds weird to say furlough as an opportunity, but opportunity to to think and to not be under the obligations that employment has. Um, I haven't been furloughed, but I have been laid off, wrongfully laid off. Um, I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to hold on to that for a very long time. Um, and I remember in the initial shock of it and the hurt and the disappointment and the, um, I can't even think of any other words to describe it. Like it's still emotional to me. And I think for me at the time, it was more emotional because I had put my trust and faith into these people um, who are just people who are just corporate people. But, you know, they always said, you know, we'll have your back and we're going to grow together and we're going to, you know, build this all this stuff professionally together. Um, And, you know, when push came to shove, like I was cut um, again wrongfully. But, um, you know, I, I remember that time I use that as an opportunity to kind of pour into solace. And, you know, we went to the library and went to the park. And had I not had that time, I wouldn't have been off in the middle of the day to go to a random park in our neighborhood and meet Bethany, Bethany. who, you know, is in our life. So, I mean, it's when you're in, and I'm going to say this now, and I'm still not going to acknowledge it until the next season that I, I'm to go in. But when you're in a tough season, it's so easy to not to have tunnel vision and to only be focused on the difficulty of the season that you're currently in. But when you get out of that season and you're able to look back, like it's so annoying, but my mom used to always say, had I known is always at last. Um, and I, I feel like that's a pretty understandable um, statement. And it used to drive me mad when she would say it like, no duh, Tina, like, of course it's at last. But as an adult, it makes so much more sense. I'm able to look back and see all the things I gained in that season. Um, I think in that season that I was laid off, I was able to go to Ghana for two weeks um, and take solace with me um, and meet family that I, you know, had only ever heard stories about. So, you know, when you're in a season, it's tough. I'm in a, I'm currently in a tough season. Uh, I'm currently struggling looking at everybody, you know, prospering and flourishing and growing and making pivots and i just feel like i'm stuck in quicksand but you're not i feel like i am i know um but i know i'm going to get to another season and look back and realize all of the things i was able to accomplish um and you know probably have moments where i'm like man i wish i, wish I was still there so i could you know embrace that i could do this or do that um but in for the time being, that's not where I am. So that's not what I see. Um, and I have to regularly like kind of pep talk myself like, you know, you're gonna look back at this and realize like, it was okay. And it wasn't as bad as you thought it was. So you know, yeah, he the furlough was tough on him initially. Um, and you just you don't know how to support someone who is the pillar of the family financially um, in that situation, because it's easy for me to be like, it's gonna be okay. But I wasn't looking at the numbers. So, um, and I just know as a man who is, who sees himself and who is the provider of the family, that's just a different weight to have to carry. Um, and it'd be one thing if it was just the two of us, because if it's just the, when it's just you and your spouse, like you can hustle, you can make things happen. But when there are dependents who didn't ask to be here, um, you definitely have a different level of stress. And fortunately, we were in a situation, I think I had just started my freelance stuff right before. So, I mean, don't think I was, you know, rolling in the dough. We weren't, you know, 
swimming in it. But we had a little bit. Of, we, had, we, we were had, fine. We had some small coins. Um, we, were we were still able to enjoy and to live um, to how we had, for the most part, normally done. But you know, it's it's definitely part of me was like, oh, just tell everybody um, so that you don't have to feel confined or you know feel i don't even know what the emotions were that i anticipated he would feel um because when i got, got laid off he was still working so it's like we still had money um and i think i was getting a severance um but when he got furloughed it was like ugh, this is ugh. um so it, it it was it was definitely tough and i you know i didn't know how to console or support and i didn't want to overstep um but i also didn't want to like not care at the same time but it it's it's hard this was a hard season to also support someone um because at least for me there were some days where i'm like i'm having a bad moment and i just want you to to you know abide by 6 feet and then there were some moments where I'm like, I just need you to recognize in this moment, I need you to like physically smother me. I need you to hold me. I need you to make me feel safe. Um, but I'm not going to say it because since I have negative African energy, your positive energy is supposed to pick up on this stuff. Um, it just but cancels he, out. But positive he never, and negative cancel out. But he never did. Uh, or he, ra he rarely, he mixed them up. So, you know, it's just. It, I, and we could probably have a whole other episode on just marriage in a pandemic. Um, oh, maybe we should. We should. That would probably be a lot of fun. But, you know, we, we survived. And like you said, not a lot of people knew. I'm sure some people will hear this and be like, when when did a fur <laughs> like, when were you furloughed? Uh, and, I, and I think, I remember at one point, like, it was like right after you got furloughed. I can't remember who, but like someone had asked you for money, like for a quick loan. And I was like, no, not now. Like, don't, don't this is such horrible timing. Um, don't, don't do this. Like, how are you just going to sprinkle salt in the wound universe? Um, but you know, we, we made it out. And you know, sometimes when you're going through something, you do have to let people know at other times you need to cope in your own way and you know sometimes that's keeping it into yourself and figuring things out um and determining if you want to release it but you also as a partner have to respect how your partner chooses to cope which isn't always easy but um yeah mental health is is important take your mental health seriously um you know we we talk about physical health but i am a i am a believer that a lot of your physical health can be affected by your mental health and vice versa so you know take care of both like you when you have a car you get oil changes you tire rotations like all of that like don't take care of physical things better than you take care of your own self. So, you know, we are proponents of mental health. Um, we definitely encourage people group therapy. Um, I did that for my like postpartum. I also did individual therapy, but like just talk to someone. And if you're talking to someone and you're not connecting, it's okay. It's okay to fire a therapist and find someone who speaks to you. Um, whether it be color wise, gender wise, orientation wise or someone who's the complete opposite like sometimes you just need someone who does not relate to you to be able to give you a different perspective but you know you are the master of your health um so you definitely need to be responsible and take care of yourself and your your family by taking yeah. care of your mental health so um we're gonna go ahead and wrap we appreciate you guys listening um, to these therapeutic, <laughs> cathartic, this is my, my Google, my Google psychology degree. So, uh, we'll bring Jay Belk in. Don't forget to check out E Black Charlotte, um, going on until this Saturday here. If you're, if you're here in the queen city, um, happy, uh, pride month, happy Juneteenth month. Um, we love you guys. Uh, we appreciate you listening. Appreciate you rocking with us. We'll be back next week. Episodes every Wednesday. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. Be safe. We out. Bye. Stop me now, yeah, I done can't wait too far to stop me now